Hey guys, I guess most of you are familiar with the PTR that has launched this week on Tuesday and I have been playing for a few days here and there and my first goal was to make the grenade rogue um, work. So um, many of these grenade aspects got reworked or buffed in the latest patch, which is live in this PTR. And so, um, yeah, I, I was trying to make a pretty good and viable grenade rogue build. And I'm familiar that um, Woody also has already posted a video yesterday. But uh, I think that um, my build is slightly different from Woody's build and I personally think that my build is also superior to his build. Uh, no offense, I really like Woody, but um, yeah, I just uh, also wanted to share with you my build. And so yeah, here we are, you can see me clearing this tier 60 pit. So um, I have not really pushed a lot uh, yet. I still need to get um, some items. So in fact, I'm only playing with one unique that dropped in Helltide. So I found the new, this new uh, flurry unique ring. So that flurry also uh, can drop those grenades from time to time. Um, so yeah, that's the only unique ring that I have found. Or the, the only unique item I have found so far because I didn't kill any of the uber bosses yet um, so my gear is far from optimal I will also show you later what I have currently equipped so um, you can say um, so like I don't have perfect gear so far and still I'm kind of able to clear this uh, tier 60 pit which is uh, even stronger than a tier 100 nightmare dungeon and the problem here is not damage as you can see so the damage is pretty insane and it all comes from these grenades so um, I'm playing with flurry but I have only uh, skilled one rank into flurry so all of this damage you're seeing here is coming either from grenades or from some affixes on the weapons that we will talk about in a few minutes. Um, but I wanted to say that the biggest problem here is not the damage, but is um, to actually survive in the higher pits. So they have um, changed this defense system quite a bit. So we used to have a lot of damage reduction affixes on our chest plate and on our pants, let's say. But in this PTR, so in the season 4, it seems that there's damage reduction affixes, so like damage reduction flat or damage reduction uh, versus close enemies or versus distant enemies. Um, there's literally nothing left from that, so uh, it's very difficult to stack damage reduction on our gear. I'm not even sure if it's possible at, possible at all. I have not checked every tempering recipe yet. Um, so, but my idea here was that most of the damage reduction comes from our Paragon board and especially with this grenade build, um, we also have access to another very nice glyph which is also um, get, uh, yeah, getting us to another 10% damage reduction um, kind of uh, ethics in the Paragon board. So yeah, that's where our tankiness mostly comes from. So you have to get a lot of damage reduction Paragon. I will also show you later. But yeah, so if we can survive, and it's uh, pretty close sometimes as you can see, um, then we are good and the damage is just insane. And now you can also see the boss clear here. So like I said, uh, all of this damage comes from grenades. And uh, yeah, you can see that um, the boss is also dying pretty fast, especially after we have staggered him, so we, he is um, stunned and frozen at the same time. The damage just explodes. And here I was even lucky enough to find another unique ring, so uh, the x ring here dropped from the pit, also very nice. And now let's talk about my gear for a second. Uh, maybe even lower down this uh, volume a bit, it's uh, pretty loud. So let's go over my gear. So you can see I have uh, mastercrafted a little bit. So my uh, weapons, I have mastercraft, uh, masterworked them to like let this crossbow at least to eight. And I think, yeah, this weapon's only four. And also the rings, only four. So I think by n right now I should have many materials. Yeah, in fact, I have 360 neath irons. So I could um, break them down into this, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, up up to sides and ingoliths so i could uh, masterwork 
uh, much more. But I think this shows that this build should be pretty vi uh, viable in season four. So I have uh, I'm far away from perfect gear, and so like I mentioned, I didn't master work too much here. But the damage output is pretty decent. So um, on my gear, so on the weapons in season four, there are not too many affixes that you can uh, roll on them. In fact, we can go check uh, at the occultist. So here you can see if I put in this weapon here and you can see possible affixes so it's not many there are not many affixes left so we have dexterity which is still pretty good as our main um yeah main stat of the class then we have something like critical strike damage which could be useful especially for precision builds which we do not care um in this uh, grenade type of build and then you have yes something like vulnerable damage and in my case also attack speed which i uh, got lucky uh, with my master working and maximum life so i think in fact most weapons in season four you um, just want to have your primary stat so dexterity for rogue then you want attack speed and maximum life or critical strike damage so that's pretty easy and yeah we will see if that stays in the games uh, on season four in one month or not but so far um this is what i believe will end on the uh, on the weapon categories and now here you can see i don't have many um i don't have many tempering recipes unlocked yet so i believe here i only have offensive and weapons and here only this uh, general recipe with damage to close for example which i have rolled here and also on weapons uh, i didn't find any new recipe yet but this elemental search recipe that we have unlocked in the ptr from the beginning it seems to be pretty broken so here you can see you can uh, you can um, yeah kind of imprint those affixes here which have a lucky hit of 40 percent chance to deal either physical or some kind of elemental damage so here you can see on my crossbow i have this um, 40 percent chance to deal lightning damage and on my weapons, I also have here this shadow damage and this cold damage. So ideally you want physical damage since our grenade build synergizes um, here and there a bit with um, physical damage multipliers. Um, but it doesn't make too much difference. So here I just uh, left it how it is. And I believe that this affix, uh, this uh, flat damage affixes are pretty insane. So, um, you, I have also tested this in the testing room with the dummies. So it seems even by um, only casting Puncture, you can deal a lot of damage just with these affixes because Puncture has a lot of uh, lucky chance. Um, so it's pretty um, easy to trigger this 40% lucky chance. And then we just deal this massive amount of flat damage. So this works very good in addition to grenades. So we have grenades for this AOE damage mostly. And also then we have this um, flat damage affixes uh, which we can use with puncture. And this also helps us a lot versus bosses. So we deal also millions of damage, I believe, only with this affixes, no weapons and with puncture. So pretty crazy. I'm not sure if this will stay in the game like it is, but um, for now it's pretty huge. And now let's finally talk about the aspects uh, of this build. So I think the aspects are pretty straightforward. Um, I only have mineral so far, but you can see here I'm running all basically all grenade aspects. So we have opportunists on our two-hander. Uh, we have tricksters. We have a surprise. And on my ring I have artful initiative. So all of these grenade skills uh, aspects which increase my overall grenade skill damage and most of them are uh, mineral as i mentioned and especially this one is pretty important so this opportunist aspect um, deals the most damage so um uh, there's uh, there are big differences between type of grenade uh, procs let's say and like i mentioned so this opportunists aspect is the most important one because this grenade will deal the most damage and this damage can go up to like let's say over 1 million even um so with perfect gear and 
max road aspects so here i have a lot of room of improvement so i can reach 80 percent instead of 50 percent and then also my flat damage number will go up so i believe with uh, perfect gear we will reach uh, between one and two million damage per um, grenade which is procked by this opportunist aspect alone so and that's that's like the reason why we want to put this aspect on the crossbow so on the two-hand weapon especially to even boost this up so we gain this 100 percent um uh, bonus for this aspect power so yeah put your opportunist aspect on the crossbow and the rest of the aspects you can just um put them on all any of your weapon or your ring then here, like I mentioned, I was lucky to find this uh, Saboteur Signet, this new unique ring in the Helltide event. And this one says that your flurry has a chance to also release stun grenades. And then your stun grenades also have some small lucky chance. So I'm not really sure how important it is so far. I've tried to test it a bit, but I think I need more time to um, yeah, confirm something. Um, and in the end, it could even be possible that we do not need this ring so we could also play this build entirely without flurry i believe also the damage of this grenades is not too high so like i mentioned while with this opportunist aspect our grenades deal up to 1 million damage uh, sometimes even with this um, not perfect gear uh, these grenades that are rocking from flurry are dealing more like 50 to 100k so um, it's like a factor of uh, 5 to 10 less damage than this opportunist aspect grenades so i'm not really sure if this ring and flurry is even needed but so far i um yeah kind of liked it and yeah like i mentioned it needs needs more testing to be done but I just wanted to share this build as I have it right now, so you can also test with it and uh, play, uh, yeah, play around a little bit. So, but yeah, these are basically our grenade aspects. Then you want also this encircling blades aspect if you're playing with flurry. So then your flurry can uh, cast in a circle and yeah, deal more, hit more enemies. Basically, that's the only reason why we need this aspect. So we don't care about the damage. Like I mentioned, Flurry does nearly zero damage in this build. And then we also have Frostbitten. This is also important in order to um, freeze our enemies. So maybe there's an alternative to play with Cold Imbument, because Cold Imbument also works pretty good with Flurry and instantly freezes all enemies. But so um, if, we if we find ourselves in a spot where we need to free up one aspect on our gear, then probably you should replace Frostbitten with um, Cold cold imbuement and then i don't know switch something maybe even shadow steps or if we are doing like very high tier pit pushes then maybe that's the way to go i'm not sure yet but frostbitten is very nice in order to freeze enemies and to benefit from some additional multipliers versus frozen enemies so in our skill tree we have for example um, frigid finesse which deals 30 percent more damage versus frozen enemies and here also that's, this is not the max rolled aspect but uh, we would also deal 25 percent more critical strike damage versus frozen or stunned enemies which is also pretty good and the last offensive aspect is on our amulet and here i have this also reworked retribution aspect so now it um, deals up to 45 percent more damage on the amulet versus stunned or knocked down enemies and well with all these grenades here we are stunning all the time so another very nice multiplier for this kind of uh, grenade build and yeah i think it's worth it to put it on the amulet just to boost it by another 50 percent um, of the aspect power and um yeah we like go the good news in this ptr season four is also we don't need to put any uh, of this uh, attack speed aspects anymore because we have so much attack speed uh, on our weapons so you can see here i have 40 percent attack speed on my uh, two-hander alone and then also on my on my daggers here also on my ring i have attack speed i could have attack speed on my gloves um so attack speed is really not a huge problem anymore and we are reaching this first 100 percent um cap very easily with gear alone and i think maybe i'm even over capping i'm not sure okay not so far but yeah so this is very nice we can put a lot of um damage aspects and don't care about attack speed 
And on the rest of the gear, so I wanted to, like in long term, I want to replace this helmet with something like Godslayer for even more damage versus elites and bosses. Or if we are too squishy, I think the trick here is to play with uniques that ga get us some more damage reduction. So, so for example, I think there's this unique helmet for Rogue. Um, this, uh, I think, Cowl of the Nameless or something like that. So it's a unique helmet that increases our lucky chance and also gives us uh, damage reduction to close enemies as an FX. So I think something like this could help us to push even further into the pit if we need uh, more survivability and damage reduction. Of course, the Harlequin Crest Shaco would be very nice as a Uber unique. And even Andarios maybe for the ceiling, just because we are so desperate to survive in the higher pits. So this helmet is not optimal so far, it's just legendary helmet with some defensive aspect on it. On my chest plate I'm playing with Juggernaut just because I want to reach my armor cap and I'm even I'm not even sure if they have changed this armor system. It feels like I have way too less armor so maybe we need to stack even more armor in season 4 but uh, this is also something that needs to be tested. So yeah, just you need to stack as much armor as you can on your defensive gear. And on my pants I have this uh, explosive verve aspect and this is also very crucial. So it says your grenade skills count as trap skills. So um, because we're playing with exposure, which, will, uh, which I will also cover in a minute, we want to trigger exposure as often as possible. In order to make it work, we need to uh, make our enemies affected by trap skills. And by playing with explosive verve, we make our grenade skills count as trap skills. So th this leads into this very nice um, um, snowballing effect of uh, grenades, dealing damage with grenades and then Pre, uh, proccing more grenades with exposure so um, yeah this is uh, pretty important as well and yeah so this is the gear and all the aspects so you can also see that I have pretty nice um, FXs so far on my amulet for example I have uh, critical strike chance cooldown reduction mobility cooldown reduction so I really like this new changes and also on, your ring, on the ring you can have uh, something like attack speed like I mentioned it's also pretty cool um, they have removed a lot of damage reduction from defensive gear as I mentioned, so um, we will take a look at my Paragon board uh, in a second. So, but first let's take a look at the skill tree quickly. Um, I have Puncture, obviously. This is a very good basic skill still. Then, like I mentioned, only one rank into Flurry and only one rank in Enhanced Flurry. So here I can heal a bit with Flurry and I just need Flurry to um, trigger this a unique ring which casts even more stun grenades sorry oh. and yeah so this is the only reason basically um just want to uh yeah proc more grenades and yeah this can also heal us up a little bit so also pretty nice and uh, difficult content so here we are also taking all of this passives then i like discipline shadow step for movement and cc breaks here I just have very, like I have many points to spend in this build because we are not skilling any core skill to the fullest. So here I even can take, um, put three points into rapid gambits for example, so we can evade a little bit more. And also here concussive, very important for a more critical strikes chance, which we need for frostbitten aspect, especially to freeze. And then, very nice combination, we have um, Concealment. So Subverting Concealment is basically how we make enemies vulnerable. So I can again show you in the gameplay maybe. So the way, we are not playing with Exploit Glyph on our Paragon, but instead how we make enemies vulnerable is by casting our Concealment, like you can see here. And then the next attack makes enemies vulnerable automatically. So we just need to time our attacks properly. First, like first cast concealment, and then cast either um, flurry or death trap or smoke grenade. So here I think I failed or it took a little bit too long. But this is how we make enemies vulnerable, basically. Okay, we just need to uh, time our attacks a little bit with concealment, and then uh, everything gets vulnerable. And here smoke grenade, also very nice for pushing our damage damage a little bit further, so we get 25% multiplied damage after using uh, smoke grenade. So I think the usual um, the usual order of skills is first concealment, then either smoke grenade or flurry, 
or you c start like also in higher pits i think it's a good idea to start the fight with smoke grenades like i did here i think so here i see this elite pack and what i do first is uh i first cast uh, a smoke grenade to daze them so they don't attack me and then i go off with uh, concealment and the rest of the skills and um since we are playing with exposure we will also reset our cooldowns very often so um here you can see uh, after we finish our combination of casting all of our skills, after I push, um, after I activate my death trap, it will reset all of my skills. So you can see uh, I have uh, I have death trap ready again, and then I have I'm resetting my skills. And this is also because we are playing with uh, preparation. So uh, the idea of this build is we use death trap in order to um, reset our other skills which are dealing most of our damage so for example concealment is our main damage source kinda because like I mentioned opportunist aspect on our crossbow has the best um, grenade effect of all of our gr grenade aspects so we are dealing most of the damage with grenades procced by opportunists and opponent says we need to enter or break stealth and the best way to do that is with concealment so that's why we are skilling concealment and uh, we want to reset this reset concealment as often as possible and we do this with death trap so yeah that's basically this entire loop and yeah smoke grenade is just here to in even further enhance our damage so here we also taking this two passives by the way we do not take weapon mastery because it does not scale our damage with grenades i believe so that's why i passed on that one here we take frigid finesse for even more uh, multipliers like uh, damage more damage versus frozen enemies here we want innovation and then three points into second wind to even further increase our lucky chance because we need this for exposure and yeah, like I mentioned, Death Trap to reset our skills, Trap Mastery for even more critical strike chance after casting Death Trap, Aftermath for energy restoration, so uh, we, want to, we want to spam our Flurry as often as possible, and then after resetting Death Trap, we can very easily reset our energy um, pool, so very helpful, and as always, 3 points into Haste and Exposure, like I mentioned. Okay, so... Um, this is this loop i can show it again we um we want to reset our ultimate with exposure and with preparation and after resetting our like casting or resetting our ultimate we also reset the rest of our skills and we always want to cast uh smoke grenade and concealment as our main damage source kind of and flurry is also here to spam grenades and puncture is also here to like increase our single target damage and um, like i mentioned it also works very great with this uh, flat damage affixes in our weapons so um yeah i hope this was clear like this whole skill rotation actually is pretty easy you just slam all of these buttons you just uh, <laughs> yeah try to spam all of them and somehow everything dies just because you proc so many grenades but yeah this is the basic idea and now i also want to quickly show you my paragon board as mentioned so this one also like uh, like i mentioned woody also has uh, published his build, grenade build but i think he was not really finished or polished with his paragon so for example um, here I was uh, trying to already min-max a lot of stuff and you will see, so like I mentioned, we need to focus on defensive glyphs way more than before just because we need to kind of uh, compensate the lack of uh, survivability on our gear. So on the starter board though, we start with Pride, which is here to primarily boost our damage. So we deal 13% more physical damage to healthy and injured enemies. Also get a little, a little bit more armor. So I really like Pride on the starter board here. Then we have Tricks of the Trade. Here we go with Closer just to get this 10% reduced damage effect of the Glyph. Uh, also here we take damage reduction from close enemies. And on this... Um, no witness board we want diminish also another glyph which is very nice for defensive purposes so we take 10 percent reduced physical damage from vulnerable enemies and also get a lot of maximum life with this glyph 
so very nice for survivability again. Then we have this uh, this explosive glyph. This is our most offensive glyph. So you can see here um, on the cheap shot board, it has the best position because we have many dexterity nodes. So here we are getting the maximum, which is about 600% stun grenade damage. And here again, we have 10% damage reduction for two seconds which is pretty helpful we also take this note here for more damage and here we also take uh, this legendary note deadly ambush for even more damage critical strike damage to um, a trap affected enemies basically uh, here it's not optimal i should somehow reach this note maybe one day but i'm not exactly sure maybe we need to switch some um, boards here and there in the end but here you also want Turf as another damage reduction glyph. So we already have, I think, four damage reduction um, glyphs uh, or three. Yes, so um, yeah, with this one four actually. So that's what we need in order to survive in the pit. Then here we have control glyph for another 20% uh, damage multiplier, which is very nice versus stunt and frozen enemies. And also they have buffed this exploit weakness um note so now it goes up to 25 percent which is pretty nice if you want to push for this very very hard pits later in the end game and then we so you can see we have already six boards and then we also have a seventh board um here this is this larena's instinct board and here i went with versatility i'm not sure 100 percent of versatility works with grenade skills but i think it should since exposure also calls them like like somewhere it's mentioned that the grenades are grenade skills so i think they also count as non basic non core skills and they should work with versatility but this needs to be tested to be sure 100 percent but if it works then it's pretty good glyph i think here in this board so we get a little little bit more resistances and yeah also more damage so yeah this is my paragon board um I think this build works very well overall, so you saw me clear a tier 60 and like I mentioned I don't have perfect gear and I'm still missing some uniques I really like to have um, and I will farm them by, uh, from Duriel soon. So here I just wanted to share my build so far. Uh, this video is way too long, I wanted to make a short video but whatever, maybe you enjoy this uh, longer guide for the PTR. So yeah. I hope you had fun. I think I will see you in the next video soon. I will test some further builds in the PTR. Try to get maximum out of those days we have left. So if you're interested in that, leave me a subscription and leave me a like if you enjoy my content. So I guess I see you in the next videos, guys. Have a nice day and bye bye.